So guys, it's really been a gong show recently with Ledger Recover pissing people off. And now what I hear is that Trezor, apparently the Model T has been exploited. It has been hacked. So this one has got to go. But anyways, today we're gonna be talking about security, specifically my own solution, the software engineer solution to managing security. So guys, recently I made a video, Ledger Recover versus Trezor. And I guess y'all liked it because that blew up. But right after making that video, I went ahead and I ordered myself a Trezor, right? To feel safe but before I even actually got the treasure delivered to my house an article was pushed to me with through push notifications and it told me that the treasure model T the same one that I bought was actually exploited so now I'm in the process of returning this if you bought this and it just got delivered to your house you have 15 days as per their refund policy to return it and if you're scared of exploits or anything like that you don't know much about the treasure like I do then it might be a safer option to go ahead and return the the treasure which is what I'm doing so I was going to do a tutorial on how to use the treasure but since I'm not gonna use the treasure anymore I'm gonna scrap that tutorial in this video we're gonna talk about safety security and contingency plans so basically we're gonna talk about seed phrases and Shamir backup which you really should know because the ledger really depends on seed phrases and the treasure model T really depends on the Shamir backup all right so seed phrases are 12 to 24 words from which your private key are generated from as long as you have these words you have access to your Bitcoin and all your crypto ledger gives you a sheet of paper to write them all down now if someone gets their hand on their seed phrase you basically forfeit your bitcoin and crypto so in ledger if you lose your seed phrase all your crypto is gone with shamir backup you create multiple recovery shares and set a number of unique shares that must be collected to recover your wallet for example i created five shares and gave one of each to my parents and two siblings and i set my number of unique shares to two if both my parents die knock on wood i only need two of the shares, mine and one of my siblings share to recover my wallet. The number of shares can range from one to a max of 16 and each share has 20 to 33 words. At any rate, because of the Shamir scheme, inheritance works really easily here. You just need to write down instructions. So guys, what you're watching right now is Unciphered breaking into the Model T. Now, let me first tell you guys this, that I am not a treasure Model T expert. I've never used it before. I don't know how the pin and the seed phrases work. And when it comes to white hack hacking, I'm a complete noob at that, meaning that I've never done it before. But the video here doesn't really show the code, the proprietary code that they have, which they call the beast, cracking the pin and getting the C phrases. I don't know why they didn't show it. Probably to avoid any legal issues of slander or anything coming from Trezor. You know, legal battles are terrible, so they probably want to avoid that. It looks like in under two minutes, they went into this, they exploited it, ran their beast code, and they cracked the Trezor, getting into the pin and the seed phrase, which is what I was afraid of, right? And they explained in this little video that the things that they're doing is actually really, really hard to do. It's complex and it requires equipment, but they just made it look really, really easy. But what I do know is that from this video, the firmware of the Trezor is an exploit and it's hackable. And that is just too far away from comfort for me to be okay with owning a Trezor. And he did mention in the video that the only way to make this unexploitable, make it safe, is actually to upgrade the firmware. And for that to happen, Trezor would have to recall all the Trezor 1s and the Model Ts that they have sold in history. And the chances of them likely doing that is probably zero so this is what we're left with all right guys so i'm going to show you what i'm doing for security so what i have right here is a keystone what happens is you have these numbers on it and then you just punch holes with it with the puncher that comes with the keystone when you get it delivered to your house once you have it all punched out it actually all fits together so once you see these holes you just take a padlock and put it over it i mean it's not super secure because someone can cut the padlock and get access to your key your seed phrases because your seed phrases are all written in here right so this is kind of like safe but not super safe but it is indestructible which means that in a flood or in a fire it's going to survive the next thing that i have is an apricorn this is what i keep talking about and this is a military grade usb now this isn't indestructible if there is a flood or a fire this is going to get toast but inside this it has a pin in it and you need to fit in the right pin in order to access what's inside this is why this is military encrypted and i'm going to show you in a little while how this works 
So this is what's gonna happen when I go back home. I'm gonna bring this apricorn with me, and when I mean back home, going back to Vancouver, where I was born and raised, and I'm gonna keep one at my family's house, and I'm gonna keep one with me wherever I go. And because the pin is one that both my mom and I know because we use the same pin, because it's the pin that we use for our bank account. So when she knows what the pin is, she will be able to access the keys that are inside the apricorn. Everybody else, they don't know our pin, unless they somehow find out, then we're both screwed. So in that sense, I feel like it's pretty safe, but what you still have to do is you still have to write down instructions to someone who doesn't know how this all works. And that's something I admit I still have to do. I'm procrastinating on it. So I'm gonna write a simple, list of instructions. I'm gonna deposit in multiple deposit boxes across the world, like one in Vancouver, one where I'm living in the US. Now remember that these are not going to be C phrases that's gonna be in the safety deposit box. They're just gonna be instructions. Instructions of where they can find my C phrases and where they can find these apricorns. Now the risk with all this of having a copy of your apricorn or your instructions in multiple locations is that you have to be sure that it can't be hacked or misused if found and that's always something that you have to keep in the back of your mind because there's nothing's perfect now if you follow ledger's instruction like write down your seed phrases in that piece of paper plain old piece of paper that anyone can see that is the least secure way to do it one anyone can see it there's no padlock protecting it or something like that if there's a flood or a fire it's gonna be destroyed so that's why I go with the keystone tablet and the apricorn in order to protect my seed phrase so guys what I have here is a new apricorn it comes in this blue box and when you open it up you should see basically I don't know what this is it's useless it's a product sales agreement and this one here is instruction manual now this is what you need because the setup instructions here are crystal clear so I'm not gonna go through setup with you and waste your time but once you open it up you should see your apricorn inside this blue box all right guys so here is the apricorn you could see that there was a red light if you hit that green button the red light should come on and if you put in a dummy pin a pin that doesn't work this is not my pin guys so I'm just putting in random numbers and you press a green it should flash three times saying that it's an incorrect pin now, I'm gonna take it away and I'm gonna put in my correct pin so I put in my correct pin and I hit that green button now it is green and when you see the green when you see that flashing green this is when you know that your apricorn is unlocked and now you can plug it into your computer so now over on a computer you should see that when you go to finder you should find whatever your USB is called I named mine crypto one and you can also find that on your desktop and when you click this because we saw a green light and we plugged in the USB with the green light, everything is now available for us to access. So that's how the apricorn works. So guys, if you want to get a keystone tablet or an apricorn for yourself, you can find them in the pinned comments below. But if you're looking for a new hardware wallet, it's not a ledger or a treasure. Keystone has generously offered to send me one of their hardware wallets for me to test. So when that arrives, I'm gonna test it and you can decide whether you want to buy that or not. And if you wanna know when that video drops, make sure to smash the like button and smash the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to know when that drops. But anyways, Keystone's very generous. They're offering to do a giveaway with me to give away some Keystone tablets. So we're gonna see how that works. I've never done a giveaway before, so I gotta figure out how that works. Now, if you haven't already done so, please be sure to check out my last video that I did on Ledger Recover versus Trezor because y'all, all of your crypto depends on that right now because we live in a freaking clown world.